So I would like to first introduce uh, everybody with our guest uh, speaker, Adriana. I have a slide to show, to show you, uh, just few slides. Few slides are with me uh, so that you know who Adriana is. Now, uh, Adriana is from Colombia and she had been uh, to India several times. Uh, and also uh, she belongs to a, a native a native people, the indigenous people of Colombia. And uh, the title of today's lecture is uh, the indigenous people from the Amazon rainforest and its relation with medicinal plants. She belongs to Musica, Tegua native people of, of uh, Colombia. And it's a very prominent tribe in uh, Amazon forest. And she's uh, one of the important personality of this tribe. Now, let me give you a little surprise that uh, Adriana was a heroine of a film which was produced in India the uh, uh, name of the film is A uh, Nomad River. This was produced and directed by Aditya Patwadhan. And so you can understand who is Jain Patwadhan. Jain Patwadhan is father of Aditya Patwadhan. So the starring main star, the heroine is Adriana in this film. And uh, apart from that, we also have uh, Sadhu Guru Jaggi Vasudeva also in this film. Everybody knows in India who is uh, Jad Guru Jaggi Vasudeva. Apart from him, then we have the Bhatt family of Jaipur. We have, we have heard of Vishwamohan Bharji, a very famous musician. So his family, his brother Pandit Krishna Mohan Bhatt is involved. The, uh, this film also portrays the uh, the revered Bhatta music family of Jaipur with a leading appearance from Pandit Krishna Mohan Bharji and the music by composer Gaurav Bhatt. Now that is the film uh, and you can see Adriana. You can see Adriana, the heroine of the film. And she's going to speak today to us. And this is few slides of the, of the film. So you can see this was all uh, this was all uh, produced in India and, and mostly at Jaipur. So uh, some slides of the film I'm showing you. Now, Adriana spent her childhood in Indian mountains of Colombia. Later in life, after spending a year in the well-known heart of the world, La Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. That's a famous uh, mountain range, which I will explain you later in the next slide. And borrowing experiences from her real life story, Adriana played a, a fictionalized version of herself in the film A Noda River. No, Nomad River. So you can see this is the slide showing uh, Colombia, and you can see uh, the Panama and also some other countries. And the darker side, you know, so these are the mountain rings that we are referring to. Yeah, an isolated mountain range in northern Colombia. And so this mountain range, the Sierra Nevada, uh, is uh, the highest coastal uh, range in the tropics and one of the highest coastal ranges in the world. Sorry, I'm trying to change my uh, slide, but I think I'll be able to do it. Okay, so this is Colombia, and you can see this is the Panama. This is the Panama Canal. This is Colombia, surrounded by Ecuador and Peru, 
Brazil, Venezuela. So these are the important uh, countries around uh, Colombia and the mountain ranges are around and the famous Panama Canal is, you can see this star, this is the famous Panama Canal. Now she undertook a trip to India. She visited India several times to further incorporate the practice of yoga into her spiritual path. Since then, this path has been nurturing and expanding as she goes deeper into ancestral practices, medicinal plants, agroeconomy, and engaging in various rituals for honoring the web of life. Currently, different experiences have led her to collaborate on four projects, all aimed at preserving life and strengthening the social fabric of various communities, organizing indigenous elder gathering and taking part in holistic education programs for vulnerable children and youth in Colombia, writing books about indigenous people. And mind you, she had been very, very active in preserving the tradition and culture of her ethnic group. This talk aims to contribute with a post-anthropocentric mentality and practice in our social systems by engaging with original people, cosmologies and ways of being. Therefore, this conversation will reaffirm and defend the biocultural diversity of our territories. Now, just few words about this indigenous people uh, the, the group that she belongs to. Now, they are worshippers of sun god and they, can't, they call sun, sir. Now, su, sir, and Sanskrit in sir, su means sun god itself. Shia is also moon goddess and Shia is our goddess also. So many elders, have, I have met them several times and have met uh, Adriana also several times. They visited Bharat and they found that that their, their culture and rituals are quite similar. So they are very happy about it and they, uh, they intend to visit many more times. Now this is a small little uh, YouTube I, uh, which I am going to show you. There is a very ancient Hindu temple found in Colombia, San Agustin archeological site. Now people have not very sure but People say that it is, it is a very ancient Hindu temple. I will uh, show you the YouTube just for a minute. Not, I will not uh, show you the full, uh, uh, the full YouTube, but hopefully you will be able to see part of it so that you know uh, what... Uh, okay, thank you very much for listening to me. And I would now request Adriana to go ahead with her presentation. Thank you very much. Namaste Matuji, namaste everyone. Mm, I'm very glad and happy to be here with you. Um, it's been a long time since um, now, since I was in India and after this long pandemic, um, I'm, I'm very pleased and happy to see you and that uh, we all survived. <laughs> um, at the moment here in the Andean mountains, and and I'm very I'm very happy that um, we are able to connect to these to use this kind of technology in order to come together to share and to inspire each other. Um, at that time, when I went to India, I got inspired about so many things about their medicinal plants, the Ayurvedic at your Vedic medicine and all the stuff. And now that I'm here and um, that I have reconnect and share with all um, my community here, it's, um, it's a pleasure now that I have to share about uh, a little bit more about us. Um, as Matuji said, I mean, I'm from Colombia and here in Colombia, we had about 102 indigenous ethnic groups different all of them so there are different ethnic groups 
and I belong to one that is located in the central part of Colombia. Um, what I want to share with you today is, um, is about a community that I'm, they are brothers of us and they are located in the Amazon rainforest. The reason why I really want to share about this community with all of you is because um, it deserves all of our attention as there are many things going on in the Amazon rainforest that has been happening a while ago. And uh, it has a lot to do with the well being of not just only the communities, I mean, the people, but also the plants and the animals they inhabit in this place, in this sacred place. The Amazon rainforest is a, is a pristine territory. And when we say pristine, we also have to acknowledge that the for us, like for the people that inhabited there, uh, they are humans or they are um, a community because of the existence of other living beings that are around that, around that place, which are many, many different plants and animals. And so that's why we call to ourselves as a living community. So we see ourselves uh, in a community that involves all the living beings around. And so for us, that's kind of how we co-create uh, with them our cosmovision or our worldview. And so the particularity of this uh, tribe that I'm going to share with you today is because they have a special connection with one plant, which we call is the king of the of the plants here is our grandmother. This plant is the portal for us of our consciousness. Just as you have many different paths there in Asia and India to reach out to a higher state of consciousness, and that involves many different practices and techniques that involves like. Um, training your body, your mind. In here, in this very sacred territory in the Amazon rainforest, we use a special plant and it all happens in a ceremony. For us, this, um, the coexistence of our communities here are very much depends on this plant. And so, um, that's today, that's something that I wanted to introduce. Um, the name of this plant is the Jahe. I'm gonna type to you on the, on the chat so you can all see the name. Um, is Jahe or Ayahuasca is the name of the plant, this sacred plant. Is a well-known plant now nowadays around the world because um, there are many people doing different ceremonies around the world using this particular plant. But despite of that um, used, um, what well, it is important for us is that cultural knowledge that are around this um, this plant. So the community is called the um, so there. Are, different ethnic groups in the Amazon rainforest that are interdependent with this, um, with this plan in order to reach to a higher state of consciousness. And so there are about six to seven ethnic groups that I'm actually very uh, currently working very close with them in the protection and conservation of this plant and of the knowledge around, around this medicine. So this is a medicine that heals our body, our mind, and our spirits. And so many people are traveling around the world to this place, to this sacred place of the Amazon rainforest in order to heal, in order to have clarity in their own lives. So um, I want to, I want to um, 
tell you as much as I can. I want to take advantage of this Anna, this hour that we are all together here to share all about this situation, um, the cultural situation and the current difficulties that we are going through here in the Amazon. And also, um, also I would love to transmit you um, how a ceremony is performed. Okay, so the, the elders, and I'm gonna show you the, the um, okay, Matuji, can you um, give me the co-host access so I can share my screen, please? Um, Matuji or or Ravi G or the G the your co-host could you give me the access so I can share my screen please now you can share okay thank you Any problem? Um, okay. So this is my elder. He's 106 years old. He belongs to the Co to the Kofan community in the Amazon rainforest. And he is a traditional doctor of this sacred plant. So he's the one, he's the chief of this ceremony and this medicine. And in a ceremony, um, Taita Kerubin, we call Taita the other. Taita Kerubin prepare and collect the leaves and from the plants and he made a special preparation with the plants uh, for some days before this, the actual ceremony. On that actual day, when we all gather in a special house that we call Maloka, which is the sacred place for us where we perform the ceremonies, the elder reached there and he can perceive what is, what is, the, what is the, the needs that we all as a, as a um, uh, participants, as a participants needs. And so he starts singing to the plant. And so then we, we take the, um, the tea, it's like a tea. And right after the all night, we're gonna have different visions that involves the teachings from the jungle, the teachings from the rainforest, and we can actually see many things about ourselves and life. We heal our bodies in that night. So uh, for us, there's been the portal to connect with Mother Earth. And so the goal of the purpose of our communities and our knowledge, our ancestral knowledge is to get closer and closer to Mother Earth to really feel that we are in the home of her. And to then eventually when we're ready to cooperate with all the living beings that are around us. And so we can actually work together for the well-being of all. But that involves working shoulder to shoulder with all those living beings, not just humans, also plants and animals, because there are they are here with us for the same purpose, which is the preservation of life. So, um, 
I have um, I have um, a video that I want to share with you. Um, screen. Uh, so, okay, let me know. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it was even thinking. Well, hold on a minute. I th Are you able to see my screen at the moment? Yes. Okay. No, this is not the right video I'm talking about. Them. Sorry. Tell me okay. sure, tell me. I don't think it was even thinking. For us, the, um, this medicine of being living in the forest um, is for us the university. That's the, the best place for us to learn about life. And so um, the, um, the purpose of, of my talk today is to remember to help each other to remember there is certain knowledge around plants and that are in favor for the evolution of, of our species as a human. And we had in here in the, in the Amazon rainforest an example. It could be just one example of those many plants that exist and inhabit in Mother Earth that are there for us and that we are here for for, the, for them. One of the circumstances that is happening here in South America, as you probably know, is that we have uh, many illegal, um, illegal plantations uh, that many countries are um, interested in because of the consumption of certain substance that are um, that have like a, a huge market. And all these illegal plantations um, have taken place in sacred territories like the Amazon rainforest. And so there are certain policies that are being declared with the help of, play of countries like the United States um, that are in favor of um, Destroying, destroying those illegal plantations. Um, the only um, a confusing, I think it's a confusion, is that the way they're doing the um, eradication of illegal plantations, we are, they're using very strong pesticides that are being produced in the United States. And so they sell this, um, this, um, pesticides. And so they're spreading all, the, all these pesticides all, all over the place in, in, a, in the Amazon rainforest. So um, one of the consequences of this wrong practice um, is that these 
pesticides are not really choosing or, or reaching only to the legal contentions. They are also there going on the, on the sacred plants, like the Jahe plant or the ayahuasca plant. And so that means they're killing the heart of all the communities here because we are very much because of the plants and the trees and that sacred life that inhabit here. So we are facing that difficulty at the moment. And so that's why I wanna also to share that with you, that we really need to come together to protect sacred territories and the life that inhabits there because it holds the consciousness of, of, our, of, our, of, of our lives here. And um, at the moment we are working very hard Fortunately, all together, we, um, there are many different associations that involve like, the different ethnic groups um, that inhabit in the Amazon rainforest. And we are coming all together and try to bring like, certain education programs to ourselves in order to transmit the knowledge that the elders had. So we, as the youngest, can learn how to prepare those medicine, how we conduct the ceremonies, because it's not easy. It's not something that, that, um, that everyone can learn. It's a life journey in order to receive that, um, that career, how to become a traditional a healer. And so um, that's, that's kind of the fight uh, from, from the voice of the indigenous people in the in Latin American countries, and and how we need to stand up in order to protect our our sacred territories, our sacred lands, our sacred homes, because as you might know, um, here uh, many countries and economies are very interested in the natural resources that are in here, and so for years ago, they have been trying to explode, to put some minings and all these different uh, practices um, in order to enrich their financial economies in their own countries. But that involves that the we, um, the we affect very much like the, the well-being of our communities here, of course. So um, that's the fight. And every day, every knee down, um, we, we receive the sound with the heart, really um, get like strengthening ourselves in order to protect life, not just for us, but for the world, for the entire humanity, because um, we are all connected. And that's not just a phrase, that's not just a belief, it's actually a fact that can be, um, can be proved in many different ways, not just from the spiritual level or dimension, but also from the biological uh, dimension, which is a fact that, for example, every year, every year, tons of dust comes from Africa and it travels, it's a river full of dust that travels from Africa to South America. And all that dust comes and reach to the Amazon rainforest. And that's the perfect moment when all the, the soil here in the Amazon gets fertilized. And so there's so many magical things that happens in the world, really, in Mother Earth, that um, that we are, we really need, we really are inter interconnected, and, and we depends. We are because of the others, so we are because of you, and you are because of us, and so um, this is the fight, and this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, Matuji asked me to create a PowerPoint presentation. I'd rather not to because it's um, because I feel this more the word. It's only one hour that we have here in, in, in this time. And so um, 
I just wanted to show the photo of the elder, one of the eldest elder, the traditional healer, the last traditional healer that has 109 years old and that he has been holding this medicine for ages. And he is for us the, the our, yeah, our, our master, and we're trying to learn from him. And so that's it. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, and I think I'm open to, you know, for questions and answers, just to give us some time um, to ourselves to share. <laughs> Thank you, Adriana. If you have any questions, please ask her because uh, I think she gave a good presentation. And uh, I think uh, we all understand what she's saying that uh, if we have to save this earth, we have to help each other and we have to go to the nature. And uh, I think that's very, very important. So please ask questions to her if you have any about Colombia and the native tribes of Colombia and uh, uh, anything about the medicine, medicine value of these plants and the traditions to Adriana, you're welcome. I think Kovacchi, have you raised your hand? Go ahead, if you have question to ask, please go ahead. Kovacchi. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, uh, Imre, go ahead, Imre. You have to unmute and ask the question. You have to unmute. It's on the left, left. Okay. Okay. okay, yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, well, first of all, uh, I uh, congratulate you. But congratulations is not enough because this is a very, uh, it's a very sacred mission what you do. And very people are busy at universities, getting degrees, getting into scientific or academic uh, uh, career, and they build up themselves, writing books from books doing nothing. Now, I believe that indigenous cultures have the key to the survival of humanity on earth. And I tell you why. Uh, if you look around, what happened in the last 200 years, really coming from Europe, we call it industrialization, whatever you call it, today it's globalization destroyed everything. And it destroyed the languages, the tribes, the lifestyle, the knowledge of many, 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 many people, tribes. I look white, but I'm a tribal person. I belong to the Seke in Transylvania. And uh, we suffer the same fate. And I know that tribal knowledge is infinitely happy and satisfying. Um, we have our own doctors, we have our own knowledge people, we have our own way of economy, we have our own way of agriculture, we have our own way of breeding animals, we have our own way of uh, gastronomy and everything. We really don't need Western science. We don't need. And the Western science is thrown, uh, pushed on our throat by universities, by, by everything. Okay, I don't want to put it into details. Uh, for a while, I worked for the privatization in Hungary, and uh, I was actually assisting Western companies coming into Hungary and uh, trying to develop agriculture. How can they develop? They don't know anything. They wanted to bring fertilizers. They wanted to bring, they wanted to make money. That's it. And then take it. Now, what you do, I think it's extremely important. 
but it can only be successful if a certain autonomy is reached. You got to get independence from the universities and from the institutions. You got to get some autonomy. This is our problem too. The government comes up with stupid plans, the ignorant, and uh, we have to live with it or try to get around it or try to sort of uh, <laughs> get rid of the bad effects. You understand? I'm talking about a lot of things. Deforestation, chemicalized agriculture, a lot of things. Industrialization, power plants, many things. Logging, mining, they say it's development. We say is destruction. We say we don't need development. So what I can envision is that the tribes, I would I just call tribes of the world and people like you, uh, just wake up to, to your own knowledge and not only wake up, <clears throat> but uh, gain a certain autonomy which would be fantastic, which would be fantastic because Mexico City, New York City, Budapest, okay, in Hungary, and all these mega cities are really, really uh, non-sustainable, not resilient, and environmentally, socially, psychologically, humanly destructive. So how to get out of this? Let's get back to the tribes. Only about 1% of the world is covered by cities. And the rest is not covered by cities, but the cities do a lot of action there. Power plants, logging, mining, plantations. Now, that should be stopped and the indigenous people should be left alone. They don't have to develop. This whole thing of development is, is a farce. Okay, that, that's my opinion. And one and a half million people with me believe the same. The Seike, <laughs> my tribe. So I'm very glad you, you're there. And it was fantastic to see you, to hear you. And congratulations, I hope you can continue your mission. Thank you. It's a, share. it's a share mission, definitely. And I'm glad that you're there. The ego and the condor need to come together closer and closer. And mm. um, now the, um, we like for, for us, this pandemic has been um, a very, it has given us very important messages in terms of um, we have come to see the, um, the traditional knowledge for what we have built till now, like for what humanity has built till now. That knowledge, it seems not to now, that not enough to give this, to give solutions for what we have built. So the fact or, or, or how we can prove that is because with the COVID-19 and this virus, we try to use our traditional medicine. We used, you try to use the ayahuasca ceremony and it was not mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And so what we learned recently is that we might need to open a door and a possibility of coming together, those two knowledge, the Western and the traditional knowledge, the scientific and the traditional knowledge needs to come together because the many things that has put us in this position in this situation nowadays has a lot to do with the scientific world. So we need to involve them in for the solution. And otherwise we won't be able to, to, to move forward. And so that's a very, 
very deep like conversations or, or a door that we need to explore or start exploring and and trying to believe of the good of both sides um and and i guess like um and that's probably why mother earth has given this this remedy of the COVID-19 to every single person around the world, because we all have the possibility to awake and to kind of redirect our own lives. And so she, got, she has given us that opportunity. So it really depends on us to put in favor from any knowledge that we have from any area or um, that we are working on to redirect that towards the preservation of life. And so if there is any um, scientists, any, any kind of um, um, knowledge that can be, um, like that can support this, this, um, this path is welcome. And I guess that's something that we need to do very carefully, for sure, because we have been trusting, and the indigenous people have been trusting very much to that Western world and to that scientific, um, uh, and, and they have taken advantage of the knowledge that we have shared. And so there's definitely something we need to do very carefully, but if we do, and if, if you know, if we could really come and from our hearts and come together from that place, um, we might see um, a solution that comes from united both, both worlds. So that's something that had just came very recently as a learning of this long night of the pandemic and now trying trying to see this as the, the new down. <laughs> Thank you. So, any Thank more you. questions, please? Any more questions to Adriana? You may ask. Uh, Raviji, we close karte. So, Adriana, we are very grateful to you for this wonderful lecture and introducing your uh, yourself and the native uh, group of uh, your community and the hard work that you all are putting in to save the native culture. And we find the uh, Colombian uh, tribe and your group are very, very close to us uh, in India. So thank you very much once again for being with us and giving this lovely presentation. And we are eagerly waiting for the release of your uh, film where you are a heroine. We, we, I've seen that film myself, I've seen it. So that's wonderful, I've seen it myself. Uh, so uh, for all the, uh, for the audience and all the people who have joined in, uh, the next lecture, next Saturday, same time, we will cover Mayan lecture uh, from Mexico, the Mayan culture from Mexico. So thank you very much, Adriana. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, lecture from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you all and uh, look forward to see Shala in another time, <laughs> in another oh. space. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.